guys. How's it going? Look, this is Anderson. <laughs> this is Liz. How are you guys doing today? <laughs> All right. So we got Andy over here because he has been my partner in crime and trying to figure out how to weave. Um, it's been fun. It's been a fun, what is it, like two months now at this point? <laughs> Off and on, yeah. Yeah. We've been working on this for a minute. Uh, at first it was a, a struggle. It was a bit of a struggle to figure out how to do it, but we, we got it figured out. So I was excited. And then this is our good friend, Ryan, but not the one that you're used to, obviously, because they look significantly different. Less bearded, Ryan. Yeah, you have much less beard here. Um, but this is Ryan Ward. He runs our warehouse, and he was just in here hanging out this morning. And I was like, "Hey, Ryan, you wanna like chill and do some? You wanna butter. chill with us?" And he was like, "Yeah, I just got some counts today, so yeah, let's do it." Yeah. So if any of you guys have gotten a piece of leather that's rolled up real nice, he probably did it in the beginning because he manages most of the leather. In this building. I roll leather, look at leather, tag leather. My whole life is leather. It's a lot of leather. He used to cut all of our belt bends, pre-cuts, um, any large panels that you would get from us. It was a nice pre-cut. Mm -hmm. This was a guy that just chopped that table to Chop pieces. Leather. He yeah. eventually, okay, so this cut is actually. through the table. You cut through the table. <laughs> so our, you know, our shop, if you've ever come in, is just right over here around the corner. And I would go in and we. We line all of our tables with Poundo, right? So like the under this beautiful cowhide rug is Poundo. If we ever actually have to do any real work, we remove the cowhide rug and there's Poundo. Anyways, all of our work surfaces are covered with Poundo. This fella over here, you would walk up and there would be a strip where he cut the belt bends because they're all, what, 55, 60 inches, yep. whatever. Yeah, so it's very specific. So there would always be this bubble. It was a bubble in the Poundo where he sliced belt bend after belt bend after belt bend. Eventually, this guy was like, I'm really tired of replacing the poundo right here. And so he took and he installed, what was it like a half inch, one inch wide? Yeah, I think it was like, a, like an inch wide. An inch wide piece of poly cutting board. And he was like, this has got to last longer than the poundo. And so he cut off like, like a one did. inch channel. It, it did. did. But eventually that also puckered and came out. That it did. And I, I was just cutting wood at that point. Don't run poly in a table saw. It doesn't like it. Because <laughs> that was the one that cut it. <laughs> But it showed how much leather I cut. It was a, uh, it's I mean, significant. This it man has chopped up a lot of leather. Yeah, more than one. Yeah, it's been a lot. So anyways, uh, we're stripping today. That's what we got. We got strips and we're going to weave them together and it's going to be great. So at some point, Justin will get this beautiful PDF because we yes, are can't do it. I can't do it. super prepared I thought it was today. Tony's, Tony's going to fix a thing so that Justin can put a thing or I don't know, maybe Tony's going to get it. In any case... I, um, a couple of months ago, I was off work on a random Tuesday. Yeah, no, it was just a day for me. And I went to this cute little boutique store down the road here and I came across this basket and I was like, that is pretty darn cool. And I was looking at it and I was like, I think I can do this out of leather. I think that I can. And you know what? I got it figured out and we did it. It was Andy, actually, because I thought when I was counting, it's a little bit difficult to set, like to tell exactly how many strips are in this. And I had, I think, 11 strips that I was attempting to weave yeah. together, but it just never quite worked out correctly. I would always like have an extra strip here or like just it like just wasn't functioning. Like I could get like two corners woven together, but then the other side was funky. And I was like, I got nothing. And then Ryan's like, no. Yeah, Andy. Sorry, this one. Andy. Um, not Liz. Or Ryan, who are we? Anyways, he was like, hey, I think we just need 10 strips. Let's try it with 10 strips. And it, in fact, it worked. So this basket is a 10 by 10 square to start out with. And then you weave it from certain points in the corners or like inside your, your block of 10 strips that produces a rectangle. So we've got this version that is uh, woven out of inch and a half strips. And then we have even done a version, and I intended to get this one finished up so that he was a complete little basket, but I only got one little corner woven up. Uh, but this is half inch strips. So you can do it anywhere from, I mean, this that's what we did. So half inch. Baby basket or a baby basket. Exactly. All the way up to and inch and a half. In between. And we are going to weave up a one inch one today. Obviously, the size changes with the width of the strips, but it's still the same concept no matter what you're doing. Um, so, yeah. 
So I'm gonna, we'll, we'll go over this. I've got people here to help me hold strips. This one was a lot of fun and it's difficult to hold strips. I haven't woven a one inch basket before. I assume it will be somewhere between this super easy tiny baby one um, and this huge monstrosity that is these inch and a half strips. Um, but yeah, the PDF will kind of go over some of the fine tuning of the things. It'll show you how to lay out your um, block and then some specifics about what you need to be checking before you start weaving. Because there's definitely, as I was doing my practicing, some things that I found uh, that made it a little difficult here and there. So first things first, you wanna lay out your 10 strips. So we've got 10 this way, 10 this way. Um, depending on where you put the different colors, if you use different colors at all, you know, you're gonna get a different section, but you can't do symmetrical. Yeah. That looks weird. Yeah, so there is, because you start weaving here, and like the same thing over here, there is no great way, like the basket will never be quite symmetrical. <laughs> it, it'll always be just a little bit offset. And like not in a, in a terrible way, but like you see on this one, um, I think oh, we I just, see. we crossed. Yeah, you do, Tony. And these are our center <laughs> strips, right? Yeah. Yeah, so strip number five, on each way because you've got 10. So the the center strip, the fifth strip was this brown one. Um, and so the bottom you can kind of see, but it's, you know, it's just, it's not, it's symmetrical in its own way. And because it's a rectangle, it's got, everything's it's got random, all random, or no, random off random, kilter. It was the third one in from each side is what it was. Oh, okay, third well, one in from each side. Spectrum. No, I mean, you got like, but you have- is a pattern. Correct. Thank you. That's the word. Pattern. Yeah. yeah. I, knew we were giving her I appreciate your help, yeah, Anthony. I'll be here all day. I know. Well, Sitting ten fine. feet away from me. Debbie guy. Aren't you always subscribed? Maybe that's the second one. All right. So you guys can play with the patterns. You can also just do it out of one color, and then you don't have to worry about anything being different. But for the sake of just having fun with some different colors. So today I kind of did one pattern one way with the, the leathers opposed. So I've got three, three, and then four in the middle here of the brown. And in this one, I had three of the brown on each side and four in the middle of the yellow. And we'll see what that weaves out into. Look, I already got these Probably cool little a squares. A leather basket. This guy will be here all hour with the jokes. Mostly um, about leather. Mostly man. about leather. Okay, so first things first, whatever you're weaving is you wanna make sure that everything is centered. So I measured, I've got about a 40 inch strip, so I've centered here at 20, and I actually put a piece of tape down um, to kind of keep everything in line, and that will need to come up as I weave it. But um, I've got these strips, so, and then you wanna center these as best you can, so you just kinda, you know, just, you can mark a center, but you don't want to see the mark on the inside of the basket. We did mark everything with Sharpie the first couple baskets, and it's just a little bit tacky when you're done. So either like you can use a silver marking pen and just put like a little tick if you are needing to center everything. Otherwise, I, I think the masking tape, oh, you know what? I'm not going to go that way. Pull the tape off. Yeah, I need to pull the tape off. I don't know where. Got Andy's here. Thanks. I don't know if I need to go on the top or the bottom. So basically, you just have to weave together your 10 strips to get your center. One very important thing after you've gotten these woven together is to check the dimensions because if it's not the same dimensions, your basket's not gonna work. It's gonna be all wonky. It's gonna be wonky. It's gonna sit funny. I had one like on that little tiny basket. I was weaving it together and um, it was like five, inches one way and it was six and a half inches the other way and uh that didn't that didn't work so well his all of the strips were touching like this is but there was gaps like this and it was a little a little weird yeah so you either you have to take up slack in part of it if you cannot get enough slack taken up then you have to release some of the strips moving the other way so that you get to the approximately the same dimensions running each direction. Oh, you're welcome. Lo Benevente. Bene. 
I'm going to assume that I got that right. You say that name. That's all right. I, I can't read. I, everyone knows that. <laughs> I've accepted it. Maybe Lou? Just without the U? Maybe just low. Maybe just low. Like Lola. Got Luna. We do have a Luna. Yeah. So, somewhere. She's over here just chilling. As long as we're not hammering, she's fine. Very good. As soon as she sees that hammer, she's like, let me out of this room. It's immediate. Like, you don't even have to hammer anything. She, like, sees it, and she's like, nah. Mm -mm. We're not in that. We're not Thor that. be her mortal enemy. I don't know. He's kind of puppy-like. She probably could have walked right over him, and she would have been fine. She likes a good puppy. I was puppy, talking yeah. about the, the um, you know, oh, superhero Thor. the superhero, the not the dog. What's his hammer's name? I have no idea. Can't, I can't remember. Mjolnir. Oh, yeah. Mjolnir. Meow, meow. That's pretty much what it sounds like. It's like a bad guitar solo. All right. So a demonstration, Tony. Yeah. I nailed it. So we are woven here. Got my good old ruler. We've got 10 and a half inches this direction and uh, almost 12 inches this direction. So that's not going to work. So I like to start in the middle and just try to squish up. Because if you start on one end and try to squish it, then you're going to become uncentered and you don't want to become uncentered. Uh, so start in the middle and then just kind of push my strips towards the center. Leather experience at its top tier level. That's right. No doubt. <laughs> uh, all right, where are we at now? So we got still 11 and a half and 11. I feel pretty good about that. I think that's close enough. We got a half inch. We could kind of scooch this out a little bit on these sides to give it a little bit more space. But so you've got your grid here. Everything is good. So now what we're going to do is we are going to mark the bottom of our basket. So this basket will sit this direction. So this will be the long side of our basket. Nope, that's wrong. This will be the short side of the basket. This is the long side of the basket. And so I'm, it's kind of hard to see, but this is our little graphic. We marked this in Sharpie the first time, which like I said, then you just have a Sharpie line on the bottom, which isn't great. But it was also like, it didn't do anything for the structural integrity. And so I was thinking, I was like, how can we do this better? And I was like, let's just tape the bottom and then you just pull the tape up. So what we're gonna do is we're going to separate out these four strands and these four strands from the six strands on either side. And then you're gonna do that on each side of your basket. And you're going to physically tape the bottom um, with the tape going to the inside and then having the tape like hit these four corners because that's where we're going to start weaving. So Anderson, tape up, tape up our bottom. Are you going that way? Hmm? We can go whatever way. Dude. It's your first bottom you've ever taped. No, you want to go up, up here. Hmm? All the way out there? Just like two of them. Yeah. Oh, five? I think it's the first bottom that he's ever taped. Yep. Five or four? It's five. Remember. It's four. Okay. So. so, but this is where the weaving starts. So this is where we want the junction to be. All right. And then we're going to tape the four here. All right. And then we're going to tape in between them. And this also helps as you weave to like keep track of the strands. We're also going to clip them. So having a bunch of binder clips is also super helpful. Um, obviously the bigger your strips are, the harder it is to clip them all together, but you can do your best. So we're gonna take a couple binder clips and we're gonna say, all right, these four strands are a section that doesn't have any clippies on it. 
And then these six strands are a section. Um, like the first side that you go through is fine, but as you start weaving the rest of it and the basket isn't really laying flat anymore, it gets really confusing who's what and where. And then you have six here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we will clip him. And then Andy will clip those four. Come over here, we're gonna clip these four together. I'm gonna clip these six together. All right, so these are all of the sections. And how this works is, is you're gonna take each side and it weaves together. Um, so these are actually creating, these junctions here are the, mm, are like these sections. So they kind of come up and create this cross and then on these sides too. Um, and we are going to be weaving up to the corners, basically. So that's what we're doing. All right. So to get this started, it doesn't really matter which side you start with, but you'll just, I just kind of work my way. Well, I'm probably going to work my way counterclockwise for whatever reason. That's what we're going to do. So we're going to start with this section of four and six. Okay. So unclip those ones. And then this is where the weaving starts, is right here where the end of your tape is. Um, this strand is the one that's laying under this one, so he's the one that's gonna go up first. If I did this strand, he's not, nothing's holding him down. So you wanna go with a strand that is coming out from under the strip, not the one from over the strip, to make sure that the weave is correct. So he's gonna come this way. And then this one from the sixth side is gonna loop over. This is my corner, so this is, the corner of the basket here. That's my corner, is what I'm creating. And then you're gonna weave this guy over. And I try to keep these lined up as nice as possible because I'm gonna have to weave through them as I go. And then you're gonna hit this one. So he goes under, over. And then this guy next. So you just kind of alternate, just like if you braid out there. And then I like to keep the kind of top section pinched because that holds everything together. You didn't do anything to the edges, right? No. No. <laughs> no. I didn't see that question. If you, no. did, it with, if you did it with something different that wasn't this soft, you know, this doesn't really edge bevel. Would you edge bevel it the natural bed? Yeah. Yeah, you want to do, if you're assembling this out of edge, just gonna make a kind of heavy basket unless you do it out of pretty lightweight veg. Absolutely, finish your strips. Dye them, whatever you wanna do beforehand, and then finish them out. Um, I use Safiano because I felt like it would be, and not, it's just easier. Cause you to. Yeah, because I wanted to, because it's fun. It's a little less work. It's, yeah, it's less work. Um, you can, <laughs> all right. So we went, this one was our last one. So this guy is gonna come over next. And you obviously have more strands on the six side than you do on the four side. So at this point, we That's are usually how math works. I know. So now we're done with the four strands. That what? one's not underneath. No, oh, it's not. Good job. There we go. And then this one is wrong. All right. So we've got our four. You see our four woven up here that Andy is holding. And now we're going to finish weaving the six. Three more to go. Always kind of keeping a hold, a hold on the juncture here at the top. And then last one. And this is why you clip them, because if you didn't clip them, it would start to get all sorts of funky. Your strands would be going weird. And so now you know that these do not belong to you. And this is the one that you need to use. How, how difficult would this be if, if you didn't have another person like Andy holding this? Um, I was able to do the half inch one pretty well on my own because the strands were so small. But the big one, I don't think I... Well, I don't know. Did I weave that one on my own? The clips really help 
This is the one we had the diagram and figured out. Yeah. I think we wove it. I'm, after you do a couple and you kind of know what you're doing, but if it's the first time, then it's difficult. All right. So now we're at our juncture. So we have built up this top edge here. So we are at this point where if you were putting a handle on it, this is where you're going to put a handle. So what we're going to do is these top strands here that you've worked your way up to, these create the stability for you to weave off of all the way back down. Because after you finish weaving this whole basket together, we're going to come back in and we're going to back weave over this top strand. And so what we're going to do is we're going to fold these over each other so that it's a, I'm going to call it like a double bracket strand, right? You're going to, you're going to line this strand on the inside. So this one, because he's coming over the top, he's going to go back first and he's going, I'm going to push him just straight back on himself so that he lines up here. And then this one, I'm going to do the same thing, even though Andy clipped me in. So this one, I'm going to weave back this way. And then what, what will happen when we're done is the strand comes in on the inside and he weaves over the outside. If your strand is coming over the outside of the top one, he weaves between those two. And so for the time being, we're going to clip this top because until we get it all woven up, um, it's going to be difficult to like kind of tighten up all the strips, you know? So it'll be a little, little cattywampus. Yeah. Not a square. Yeah. So this a little one askew. needs to go under. This one, and this one is over. Under and over. So you need to make sure when you cut your strands, and we do have kind of a guide for cutting the length of strips that you need, but these top strips have to be the longest because they have to fold back on themselves um, all the way down that top edge. And I've noted that in the instructions. Yeah. yeah. So. All right, so that is, oop, hold on. 60 inch, 50 inch, 40 inch, 30 inch. Yeah, the thickness of your leather might affect that. I always like, probably cut it maybe a little bit long if you're concerned the Saffiano is three to four ounce. Um, so just so you know. All right, so I'm gonna leave all that in there. I'm gonna have all my strips here. Um, I'm not gonna worry about trimming anything right now. And then we are going to turn and do it again. You're gonna turn over here. You've got the three and the four. Here we go. Are you going to do this one too? Mm, no. No? All right. So once again, the strand comes over. So that's going to be the one that is first. Hollywood quality sound effects. <laughs> Thanks. I strive for here at SLC. Yep. A goat hides would be good as long as you could get them long enough for the for the inch and a half basket. So these are forty inches, which would be kind of stretching it, I think, for a goat possibly. Um, plus, that would make a really soft basket, which is fine. Like if you want something that's going to fold up really well. It would be a nice lightweight one. So, you know, if you had like a market basket that it, it would still be decently strong, but it wouldn't be a hundred pounds after you got all your groceries in it. Oh, Christopher. Well, no, also, can, there, that's one by a hundred pounds of groceries anymore. Find a way. I think I last night I went to Walmart and there's maybe Eight Walmart sacks, and it was like almost $200. All right, so that's how quickly the second side came together. So we're going to do the same thing we just did. This one folds over. He goes all the way back. This one here folds over all the way back. And then if you want to, like, weave those. Weave these? Mm-hmm, how they're, so they're happy so we don't have to do that when we're done. And then we'll weave and clip this side. Oh, 
clip the top first. Mm. I don't always clip the top first. Take a drink of coffee while I get my minions to do some work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, Caddy Wampus. What is um Whirly? What is Denny? What does Denny do, Tony? Whirly something or others? He uh Denny Denny tools leather. I like wonky. I he has some fun phrases. But I felt like you were trying to get me to pick one out. Well, I feel like there is a specific one, but that's fine. When Denny's back, we'll talk to him about his phrases. I'm sure he knows them all. All right. So next, we're going to be moving on to this side. So we've got another four and another six, and we'll do some more weaving. It's very exciting. Boom. Boom. I really like these for... Um, like if you're a blanket person and you have blankets in your living room, like a blanket basket, you could put it on the floor, put some blankets in it. Um, I just think they're cute little presents. They remind me of like little red riding hood baskets. Or Ryan was like, what do you do with a teeny tiny half inch one? And I was like, it could be a candy dish. You could put your candy in there on your table in a cute little leather basket. I do want to do one that has been tooled out of veg because I think that would be really neat. But I did not have time to prep that for this. You could use a bunch of embossed strips. Mm hmm Yeah. And you sure could. That would be a, a lot less effort than tooling. Well, there was also, we had talked about, I don't remember if we decided, but <clears throat> we you could do one, well, I guess it would be... The top one two thick veg strips and they would end up like supporting the bag right where your your handle is yeah so, so if you did the strips. outside strip on all four sides so if you took this and all of your outer strips you could do veg tan because these create the top strip yeah. um that would also probably be pretty cool maybe one of these days we'll do one of those all right now we're done with this fold those over that one's getting a little short but it'll be fine and now we're gonna weave. Weave, Andy, weave. It's just waiting for you to clip those last ones. <laughs> I feel like I'm speed basket weaving. It should be a it should be a sport. You guys wanna have basket weaving competitions out there? God, I've got a lot. Ryan's a tootler. Some, <laughs> yeah, I am. You get work done pretty quickly, but somehow you are really a tootler. Man. Slow and steady. It it, it really works. Exactly. See, that guy knows. All right. And then, well, maybe we'll do it on the last. This side is different than the other side. So this side comes together. This is the, I'm going to call it the front side of the basket here. Um, he comes together just as is. You don't have to do anything special. But this end, the little short end, you do have to do something special. So once we get this last side woven up, then we will show you what happens on the short side. All right. Last side here, we've got our four and our six. This guy goes first. I was four and six once. Wow. Yeah. That's impressive. Yeah, I did it all on my own, too. Well, maybe one more time in your life, you will be four and six again. Yeah. You gotta just have a bigger number in front. Yep. It just, there won't be a division between them. They'll be together. Yeah, that's right. You're going to be so good at this, you can make Christmas presents. I really, I, I have gotten... You could have Chris a, a, a fanny pack. That would be, be impressive. A woven fanny pack. A it would still have to be like an EDC one, though. I don't even know what that means. He needs a lot of pocket. Everyday oh, carry. Yeah, he needs, it's, it's, it's very specific. He was like, hey, can you give me my flashlight the other day? And I was like, yeah, where is it? He was like, it's in the back pocket on the left-hand side right mm -hmm. next to my all per like his i don't know swiss army 
tool. Multi-tool? Yeah, multi-tool. Dang. Yeah, and I was like, you're more organized than my purse. Love you, dear. You can make these out of a two-inch and be a good beach bag. Would the sand would just fall out the bottom. Right. Even the inch and a half, like, <laughs> I guess maybe you couldn't fit many snacks in it, but you could probably get all your gear in there. When I go to the beach, uh, sand does not fall out of my bottom. I always have to end up washing it out. <sighs> For all you people that go to the beach, that's the real thing. All right. Sand gets so, flip, flip, flip. You got everything? Everything is woven? Perfect. Sure. All right. Now you can just show us the, the fancy thing that you were talking about earlier. On yeah. The back side of the bag. Show you what you do to the short sides. My wife's on the short side, for sure. Pretty adorable. Yeah. Hi. Whopper Jod. That's it, Ron. Yeah, he goes to Burger King. Whopper sure. God. No doubt. That's a Denny one. Oh, my. Yeah. So Denny goes to Burger King? I kind of doubt it. <laughs> Maybe. I haven't been to Burger King in years. Now I want a Whopper. We tried a few weeks ago. We were headed up to Kansas City, and uh, Chris, Chris's brother and I always get ourselves like a a breakfast before we leave and I, I let him choose and he chose Burger King instead of McDonald's which kind of crushed my soul a little bit because I really love a McGriddle and and so we go to Burger King and we sat in their line for like 20 minutes <laughs> waiting on one minute. like three sandwiches Golly. it was t it was the worst and I was like okay Matthew I like you quite a bit but we're never doing this again <laughs> uh, I'm guessing you've never waited 20 minutes on McDonald's no, they get you in and out. They're fast. Yeah, you are. That's exactly <laughs> what I was saying. All right. So this is what the the long side of the basket will look like. Um, as we tighten up all the strands and back weave them, you will find that on the short side, there is not, it, it, you can't back weave the last two strips. Um, it just doesn't work. And so... What you do is, is they both come out and they cross each other. So you still got to make sure that it's weaving in the correct direction. But it creates this situation. And so you create like a little V here in, in the bottom. So these five strands will weave, sorry, these five strands will weave back into themselves. Um, and these do weave back into themselves, but you don't have enough room to like loop them over it's just strange you'll if you do one you'll figure it out so those just loop back and then and then they back weave into themselves but they come out and they loop together on their own to create this feet so i'll have andy work on one side and i will work on the other side and we're going to secure all these strips together i like to start on one of the sides and then just kind of work my way from the top to the bottom So you find the next section that you can weave back through. So you take, take in this top strand, um, and then I have to find the next intersection. Oh, this is, this is more difficult with a one inch strip than it is with an inch and a half strip. Yeah, there's less room. Yeah. Pull it back through and it secures it. This one, we're going to come here. His next intersection is up here at the top. It's just the next strip down. So back through. This guy is going up and over. You can kind of push from the, the front side to give yourself a little bit more room. I'm doing it wrong. To send that strip through. Don't do that. And then we're back at the intersection, over, over here. Okay. 
front. And then depending on how you feel about like the rigidity of the connection that you have, sometimes you can keep going and then find the next intersection and weave through. So like up at the top here, I tended to weave down further and go through two intersections instead of just the one, because this is gonna kind of get a lot of tension. If you don't wanna do that and you just wanna do the one, I would suggest riveting all of this um, together. So on this, you can see that I, you know, back wove this one, I went through two. Um, this one, I did just the one intersection here before I trimmed. This one was just one. This one, I came through one. This one, I came through two down here, right here. Um, so you can do that. But also, if you do feel a little bit weird about maybe the rigidity of the leather, maybe it's really soft, or maybe you just want to jazz it up a little bit with some hardware, you can go through and you can use a crystal rivet down each one of these for fun. You can just use a double cap rivet um, down each one of these to secure after you've got it woven and you feel really good about the way that all of your strands are looking and laying. You just come through, um, take a rotary punch or a drive punch, center a hole in it, and then just put a rivet in. If you wanted to get real fancy, you could use one of those really fancy Chicago screws, but I feel like that would be super expensive. How's it going, Andy? I don't have <clears throat> have the smallest fingers. <laughs> I, like I like a quick check. It's like, oh, like somewhat there. All right, so that's one corner woven, and now you just get to repeat that four what? times. Didn't you do your corner? I did. Oh, I didn't do both sides. I just did one direction. I did one direction. That's why. Like the band. Yeah. And then after all that, we can go back through and tighten things up. Yeah. You can start working on the other one. It is easier for two people to work on a inch and a half basket. There's just more room between you. It hurts my brain. It's not squared. Kevin kept coming by as we were working on this, and he was like, I'm really glad this is you and not me. Like, well, at the end of the day, I did it to myself. It was my idea, so can't really complain too much. Growing my cuticles. Mm -hmm. Oh, that looks good. Yeah, if you like your fingers and your nails, could you whip stitch the edge? Um. Get those fingers back in shape there, Andy. Maybe. It is a lot of layers to go through, though. Like, you have four layers of each. Andy, and, and yes, should you? Mm. Yeah, it might be really awkward to like also make it through the junctions and then to find like you punch all the holes, but nothing is glued up. So like everything kind of moves. So like finding the hole through all four after you've punched everything, it, I think it would be awkward. Sounds like a lot of work. I think, yeah, I think riveting is probably the best idea to secure the top edge. You could run it on a sewing machine maybe and before you attach the handles you could just take the top and just try to it might be a little bit funky on the bottom side making sure your foot isn't catching on on that as it comes up over the machine but you could probably run it on a sewing machine to probably. secure the edge so i think riveting looks cool stuff back in there your bag's all flat but Dandy, I didn't do any bleed knots on anything. I just did mystery braiding. These, these I are, love that. These are mystery braided straps, which is my favorite thing to do. I could mystery braid forever. I know. Did I teach you how to mystery braid? Yeah, I'm and then sure. we had a mystery braiding party where we did like 700 <laughs> bracelets. <laughs> bracelets. It was a good time. It was. It was fantastic. No, you're good. It's Yep, yeah, those are mystery braided. 
I bleed. You could you could bleed knot through here if you wanted to, but you'd have to make those quite a bit. No, you couldn't. No, never mind. Sorry. No. Uh, there is one way that Denny likes to do straps where it's not bleed knotting, but he does use either the bleed knife or de like depending on the width of the strap, or he'll just use a just an exacto knife or a box cutter, and he just cuts slits every so often. Like he'll cut like a one inch slit every other inch, and then he flips it in and out, and that makes like a twisted strap, which is pretty cool. I really like those. Do we have an example somewhere? Well, there's there's also he the person <clears throat> like hanging up. Oh. Is man, <clears throat> spit it out. He just you just cut a slot and then you stick this into the strap through it and then pull it and it looks like it's woven. That's what I know. Great job, Andy. <laughs> yeah, Denny does that. I think if you look at almost any of the purses of the videos that we've done with Denny and his purses, he loves to do that strap. I guess we could like, we could do it there. These are the straps that we cut for this, oh. this particular bag and we've got the um, For your extra straps that you, you have. Oh, yeah. Here, Andy, keep shrugging. I'll do that. All right. So if you wanted to do... Twist. You just... I mean, I should probably be measuring, but... Who likes to measure... I like to measure. I don't like asymmetry, so. All right, so you keep doing that the whole length. You just cut slots every so often about the same distance. And then you're going to take the end of the strip. Flip it through. And then you get a twist. And then you just keep doing that. Make sure you go the same direction. Once again, same direction. The one direction that you started with. <laughs> yeah, you could. This seems easy enough. Yeah, and then you just you just keep going. If you if you cut them, you know symmetrically, it, it should lay better. But <clears throat> oh, hey, I have one more. So that's a fun way to do a strap. Just kind of takes it from a plain strip to something fancy. I love the mystery braid, and I like it. Like Andy put that stitch down. For me, I've got a couple of uh, purse straps that I've done this way. Plus, it was two ply, and I, you know, I wanted to make sure that the <laughs> like toilet paper, like toilet paper, it didn't come apart. It is glued together, but the stitch just looks really One nice. Will come apart. So, you should stitch it. Did you stitch it before you cut it, or did you stitch it after you cut it? Uh, I stitched it before I cut it. Yeah. So you just kind of divide up your strip, and and find your center lines for each of the three strips. What do you get? An inch and a half strip here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So inch and a half strip, divide it into three, and then those into half. That's your stitch line, and then you cut. So. It is harder to adjust the length of your mystery braid when you do a stitch line, so you've got to be pretty sure where you're at as long as your length is correct, you know, making sure that your length is correct because mystery braids shrink as you braid them. So you just kind of have to take in, that was take consideration. 18 inch, 18 inches. <clears throat> That's what you had told me. Mm -hmm. Or whatever that is. And it also depends on the thickness too. It will change. Right. So, all right. We're all back woven. Eh, for the most part. Cool. Okay, we didn't do these. <clears throat> Got your little this guy. Okay. 
Ta-da. Good job, Ryan. Yeah, I did something. All right. Got our little corners there. It looks like maybe this strip is a little bit tight or loose. Some of them are a little diagonal. We'll have to tighten some of them up. But. All right. So this is the overall shape there. We've got we've got that lined up. And so now um, you could start trimming your insides, but we'll go through and we will just double check. I could probably take all these off because they're all secure. All right, so there's your basket. You've got your four top edges. So you put whatever handle you want on there. We're gonna finish this guy up and we'll rivet him like that. Cute little basket. I actually think this would be, I mean, it's a pretty open purse, but it would be a cute little purse or a little book bag. You put some books in there and carry them with you down the street. That is the woven basket. Get it all trimmed up. Get your handles on there, however you wanna put them on. Um, secure the strands if you feel like it's necessary. Pull the tape off the bottom after you get everything lined up and you've got yourself a bag. A liner would be nice. Yeah, well, if you did want to do a liner, you would probably need to do that top stitch and it might be a little bit difficult. It would be, if you do that, send us a picture. We would love to see that but I would, you could go in, sew it into your line. If you did a nice folded edge liner, mm -hmm. drop in. That would be a fun shape to figure out. Andy is here with the words today. I don't know what's what they keep me around for. <laughs> to do Andy's stuff. Yeah. I was pretty excited about it. I think it's pretty neat. Make one as big as you want. I would actually be kind of curious. We did um, a, a veg tan one that was just split veg. That's how I started. I was like, hey, we've got a bunch of free splits, you know, that we just split off the bottom of things, just scraps. And so I took that. He made a bit of a heavy bag, though. It's, it's, it's pretty chunky. Um, and then Denny dipped it in water to try to mold it. And that didn't, maybe if it had grain on it, it would have come out a little bit better. Well, but these he, were bridal, bridal splits too. So. And he did, it took like five days to dry. That's more than one day. Yeah, it was a, it was a while. Um, but a veg split is not, is not terrible. It's all right. I don't know what you guys are laughing about, but you're really distracting it's over there sorry. between the two of you. It's my bad. It's all my fault. Got like Justin and Tony giggling at each other the whole time. They're just, they're just a couple of pals. Just adult children. It's the banana loco. The bag? No. No? Banana. Are you guys still looking at like condos in the ocean? No. Condos in the ocean. It was islands. In the ocean? <laughs> Isn't that normally where islands are? Or? The real question is, how many oceans are there? Is it one or is it? I think there's more than one. But they're all touching, so. Shoot, dang! I my all my fingers are connected, but I'd still say I have five. Yeah. Oh. Just yeah. Think about that, then you have But they're connected you know, with with like, one. Your brilliance just comes out of the woodwork <laughs> sometimes. I'm always impressed. I think it's just sarcastic nature. <laughs> Alrighty, well, that is the woven leather basket. Uh, download the PDF is free, connected to the video. It kind of goes over some of the main tips and tricks that I found as we went through it. Um, I don't know if you can completely weave a basket off of it, but it should give you most of the information. And then if you watch this, you can uh, weave a bag though. You should you should have it. Maybe it's fun. Bag. It takes a couple times. Like once you once you kind of weave up a couple corners, you're like, hey, I got it, and it kind of clicks in your head. Work that corner. Yeah. Work the corners. It's a good time. All righty, guys. I don't. Oh, I do have a preview for Friday. So if you guys want to see the amazingness that will be happening on Friday, check this out. 
we spent yesterday playing with uh, crocodile bones. Crocodile bones. We spent yesterday playing with some paint and some water. And if Tony will hit number four, like a cool guy over there. Um, on Friday, we're going to be doing hydro dipping. So check out, yeah, check out these awesome alligator bone scale things. That's really bright. I, I have a, hold on, I think I know how to do this. Nope, this way. There it is. So we've got these cool scales that we hydro dipped yesterday. Um, and then we just played around with some veg, a couple of ostrich leg pieces. This is Tony's try of hydro dipping. I got some hearts in there. He's still, Ryan oiled everything this morning to the nth degree, so he's still yeah. drying a little bit. Um, but That's yeah. not the one I did the front and the back. Yeah, you did a lot on that one. You yeah. rubbed it in real good. Hey, it, it feels a lot better than it did. Yeah. It's so in any case. Now it's like uh join us on friday for some hydro dipping we'll kind of go over the things that we there's you know so, there's plenty of tutorials out there but we're gonna have some fun we're gonna do a gator belly uh, maybe some ostrich legs and uh, we'll have some fun with coloring stuff it's gonna be a great time so have a great week join us tomorrow for live shopping at 2 p.m central and we'll see you friday bye